I, I thought everybody was, was seeing dead people. I figured out later that that, <laughs> that wasn't the case. I went, ooh, there's something wrong with me. So I, I spent a number of years doing my best to figure that out. And what I'm coming to understand now is that we all have the ability to hear God speak to us. So I do teach dialogue in classes as well, based on uh, teachings of St. Teresa of Avila. So as I was speaking to, to the Father, to the Creator, um, I speak to both the Father and the Mother, infant love and gratitude. Um, from here on out, I will call the Father energy, um, Dad or Father. I will call the Mother energy, Mother or Gaia, uh, Mother Mary. I see them all as the same. <laughs> In fact, let's just go there right now, because <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to talk tonight about the, the science of religion. We're going to talk about the art of religion and the art of living life. So, so I'm going to go there right now, and I'm going to tell you that, that the Father, the Creator, is a scientist and an artist, and, and the Big Bang was an orgasm. Got it? <laughs> Mama, Mama was around before the Earth began. Infinite love and gratitude. Um, and I'm going to tie in... I mean, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the word the Bible tonight, um, and when I say that, let me jump back. I'm going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to get a little fractal here. Bear with me because we'll just we'll pull it all home. But I was speaking to the Father Spirit tonight about how to express. We live in a world where we kind of are called, or we want definitions. We want definitions. What is it that you believe? What is it that you don't believe? What's the truth? Infinite love and gratitude. So. To sum it up, this is this what the father told me to say. He said to tell you that if Sister Teresa of Avila and Bob Marley had a baby girl, you'd be looking at her in your love and gratitude. So that pretty much sums up my beliefs, okay? Um, I believe that there are many, many, many roads to the very same place. And I believe that there is a most high God and creator, both mother and father, that loves every one of us. And that creator has been doing his and her very best to get the truth across to us through many, many avenues. Um, I do channel the Father Spirit, and I'll tell you what he told me. He told me, I have, spent, I have said many, many to come and preach to you about love. He said, you kill them all, infinite love and gratitude. Every messenger I've sent, every messenger I've sent, he said, please come on. He said, I have, met, I have sent many to preach love, but I have sent but one son, infinite love and gratitude. That is why Yeshua, Christ Yeshua, Jesus, I will refer to him as Jay, from here on out, and I do that of total love and reverence because I love him so much, infinite love and gratitude. He told me he sent but one son. That's why he's the high priest of all 13. Infinite love and gratitude. There's no J in judgment. All it means is that he suffered a higher price to speak his truth than anybody else who came to speak the word. Infinite love and gratitude. And I'm going to say that he came to do no less than we all came to do. He came to teach us all how to live from the heart and speak our own truth. Infinite love and gratitude. And so, so we go there. Mm, I want to pass this. I want to pass this. I'm going to pass this. I'm going to pass this. This is the King James Version. Infinite love and gratitude. We've got a lot of different versions. Um, infinite love and gratitude. And in the back of this book, I want to just pass it along to everybody. And just notice that the word heart, the word heart right here, on the right-hand side, is printed in that book more than the word heard. Infant love and gratitude. The word heart is printed in the Bible more than the word heard. Second to the word love. Infant love and gratitude. But we have chosen for the last 2,000 years since the death of Christ to focus on fear. Infinite love and gratitude. Fear. We chose, we chose to live where we were taught judgment from day one, so we chose to live from our heads and our thoughts instead of our hearts. So again, I'm going to go back because this is what the Father said to me. He said, you take everything, child, everything you hear from your head to your heart. If these two things are not congruent, kick it out of your head immediately. Live from the heart always. He said that's always been the message and it will always be the message. To back that up, we're just going to start out with a little scripture in Pope J. I want to back up, too, just to mention, because this is funny, just to give you some background. I was not raised in the book, Infant Love and Gratitude. Um, my father was agnostic at best, Infant Love and Gratitude. My grandparents were, on his side, were atheists. And my mother was raised in Catholic school all the way through high school, so she was just plain old pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say. Uh, so I grew up going to church on Christmas and Easter. That was in the hopes, that was in the hopes you'd say, well, if you show up twice a year, maybe I won't go to hell. I've got a shot. And a bit of love and gratitude, right? And so I was raised with the belief that if you did that, and, and if you were good enough, 
that maybe, maybe when you left your body, Jesus, he would act as an attorney, and he would go to the Father, and, and he, would, he, would, he would, you know, basically be the attorney on your behalf, and Dad would say, ah, but she did this and this and this, and he'd say, ah, but she did this and this and this, and then they'd see if they'd let you in the party and put on gratitude. So that's the way I was raised to believe. Gratitude. And there was something about that as I was a kid that just didn't make sense. It just didn't add up. It for sure didn't add up for me because <laughs> the spirit and the embodiment of Jesus has been coming and showing himself to me since I was five years old. So I'd sit in church sometimes, well, for Christmas and Easter when we go, <laughs> in love and gratitude. And what I was hearing didn't match up. I kept taking it from my head to my heart, and it just didn't make any sense. Um, about two years ago, thank you. About two years ago, <laughs> I'll just blow it out there. About two years ago, I was standing in my bathroom one morning. I was having a challenge day, to say the least. We all live on Earth, so I'm sure everyone in the room knows what it's like to have a challenge day. And uh, I was going to cancel an appointment. I had a migraine. My head was exploding. And um, as I said, I, I've been a psychic medium as long as I can remember. I have channeled for people, and I, I love it. It's an honor and feel of gratitude. Um, but so I was used to being, bringing Grandma Joe through or Grandpa Joseph or somebody's brother Larry. But all of a sudden I looked over to my right and had Jesus speaking to me, <laughs> shocked, <laughs> infinite love and gratitude. Um, and that was the first day I realized that I was channeling his energy. One of the very, very, very first things that Jesus ever said to me was exactly what I just said. He said, you take everything you hear from your head to your heart. And if these two things aren't congruent, he said, then Dad didn't say it. Got me? Infinite love and gratitude. And I'm just going to speak my truth here, but he told me this is not infallible. He said it has been misinterpreted and, 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 and misapplicated for years. Infinite love and gratitude. And Jesus wasn't the first person to come on the scene and say that. Read Isaiah. Infinite love and gratitude. We can go back a little bit farther. Infinite love and gratitude. There have been many, many. He has sent many to argue the interpretation and application of this word. So with that said, I'm not raised in this book. I'm guided by the Father's Spirit. He tells me where to read, and he told me where to read from tonight. I asked him, I asked the Father's Spirit, what is the most important thing that Jay came here to say? What did he really come here to say? What was the most important thing? And this is where I was taken to. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Notice he did not start with the mind. Okay? Because you know what the Father's Spirit said to me, and this is a direct channel. The Father's Spirit said to me, child, I do not live, I would not be caught dead in your head. In your heart of gratitude, okay? He said with those, with those limited and negative thoughts. He said, I live in your heart, child. In your love of gratitude. And so, this is where I was taken. Love the Lord, God, with all of your heart, your soul. And by the way, the Egyptians, because that's where Christianity came from, in your love of gratitude, the Egyptians called the heart, I mean, I'm sorry, the heart was, sorry, God called himself the heart of the sun. So when he was done creating everything that you see and he created the sun, he realized that the sun had such life-giving abilities that he himself called himself the heart of the sun. I was, I was thinking about that one night. I thought, wow, what's that really mean? And all of a sudden I heard the father say to me, child, what it means is I am the heart of life. And when you are living from the heart, you are living God's will, you are now living art, infinite love and gratitude infinite love and gratitude. So we'll go back and I'm going to tie that into what Jesus had to say in Matthew. What he had to say was this, love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, and then your mind, because the mind is a tool for the heart and the soul. Infinite love and gratitude. Nothing more, nothing left. We've, we've got it turned around. Does that make sense? We've got it turned around. We're bringing it in through the mind and forgetting about the heart. So what Jay said, Oh, I love this part. He said, this is the first and greatest commandment. So literally, this is how I work with spirit. I asked the Father, what is the most important thing that Jesus ever said? And this is where he took me. And these are in his own words. He said, this is the, is, this is the first and greatest commandment. The second most important is similar. It says, love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Got it? Infinite love and gratitude. He said, all the other commandments... And all the other demands of the prophets stem from these two laws. And they are fulfilled if you keep them. Now I'm going to paraphrase, which I think is funny because we're reading from the Living Bible. 
I guess as opposed to the dead ones. <laughs> and then it's funny because it says it's paraphrase. And I'm wondering what Bible is it? <laughs> it's a lot of gratitude. So we're going to paraphrase because what Jay said next after he said the most important thing, literally, so we're going to change it. If he were standing here in 2012, this is what he would say. He would say this. If you don't hear another shitting thing I ever have to say, hear this. It says, love yourself. As much as you love God, as much as God loves you, and then love your neighbor, and he doesn't mean the person living next door, okay? He means everybody. He says, love everybody as much as you love yourself, and love yourself as much as I love you, child. That's what, that's what Jay came to say, and he said, literally, if you don't remember another thing I ever say, remember that, because guess what? If you love yourself, and you have self-love, you can't help but love God. And then you can't help but love everybody around you. Release the judgment. Release the judgment. Ooh, got to go here. In the love and gratitude. These, these, this is not, this is direct channel. One of the first things Jesus ever said to me, the most important was this. He said, there ain't no J in judgment, sweetheart. He said, shame and guilt hold no value to the soul's progression. He said, you were called not to carry them. You were called to give them back to the Father. Yet you shackle shame to your left ankle and guilt to your right, and you walk shackled through life talking to other shackled people. Infinite love and gratitude. That's why he won't be caught dead in your head. Okay? Because there are empty thoughts from empty hearts. The heart is where we're called to live. Infinite love and gratitude. I'm going to read a couple more passages about the heart. And actually, I'm going to read them off here, and just trust me, they're in that book whole lot easier to go this way. <laughs> okay. Infinite love and gratitude. I gotta give a shout out to Andy too because he wrote this all down for me today. Oh. <laughs> love you, baby. Infinite love and gratitude. Um, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> this is just kind of a funny one. Spirit, spirit, spirit channels in a very funny way um, mm -hmm. through me. And so please, if anyone hasn't heard me speak, it is not out of a reverence. It's because God loves to laugh, man. <laughs> okay? And Jesus said to me, he said, you don't laugh enough. Okay? Laughter, in fact, is the best medicine. Okay? We know that laughter heals the body, so let's take it to that. We know that laughter and self-love heals the body like nothing else. Infant love and gratitude, that's what God wants, because this body is designed to heal, regenerate completely, and be whole. That's how God made us. And if you live from the heart, and you love yourself, and you release self-judgment, infant love and gratitude, you will watch your body change as well. Okay, the body follows the mind. Infant love and gratitude. Let's take, let's take some of the science as well, because we're talking about living from the heart today. Did you know, infant love and gratitude, did you know that we now know through science that the heart begins to develop before the brain in an unborn baby? Infant love and gratitude. The heart we now know through science has its own intelligence. It has its own brain. We now know through science that the heart sends three different types of electrical signals to the brain. Infant love and gratitude. What that means is everything you feel, everything you feel is creating your reality in every second. Infant love and gratitude, which is why that's the most important thing that's ever been said, and Jesus himself said so. That's the one thing he came to teach us. Love yourself as God loves you, and then love everybody else, and you won't be able to help it. Ah, so here's the funny way Spirit speaks to me. <laughs> Thanks for this, Andrew. It's hysterical. Um, <laughs> let me go here. Hang on. Instead of, instead of what, a WTF, <laughs> remember WTL, okay? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Got it? Infinite love and gratitude. That's what Jay said. You know why? Because he said, listen to what I'm saying. Love yourself, and you will be, the, you will be there too. Infinite love and gratitude. That's the way, the truth, and the life. Self-love. That's what he came to say. Infinite love and gratitude. Mm. Hang on, bear with me. <laughs> Proverbs 23.7. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Proverbs 23.7. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. John 4.16, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. <laughs> and then I love this. So this is a quote from the Big Lebowski. The dude abides. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so you got that? God is love. Wherever, li wherever where whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. The dude abides. Okay? Bam. Mom and dad, the creator, they live in your heart. Okay? The father spirit is so funny. He shows me him and mama 
cruising, just kind of laying in two hammocks on the beach right there in your heart, in fit, love, and gratitude. That's where you go to meet the Creator. That's where you go to talk to Mom and Dad. Live right there, in fit, love, and gratitude. I um, want to go here. This is a, this is a quote from Bob Marley. And, and this is what I was going to say, too, is, you know, this is what Dad says to me. Dad says, child, there are many roads to self-love, okay? Enlightenment, awakening, whatever you want to call it. There are many roads, and there's no judgment in which one you take. He says he's been sending so many people to, to preach love. He said, and you kill them all. Martin Luther, we could go on and on. We could, we could line them all up, okay? John Lennon, okay? Infant love and gratitude. He said, for God's sakes, he said, pick somebody that was preaching love. Pick Elvis, for God's sakes. Just get happy and follow somebody. Make sense? Infant love and gratitude. So here's a quote from Bob Marley. Mm, love that man. Infant love and gratitude. Life. And Ja, that's, that's God, Ja Ja, okay? There's so many names for, for God. I like to call him Dad. I also like to call him Abba. And Yeshua called him Abba, infant love and gratitude, okay? So Ja, Ja Ja. Life and Ja are one and the same. Ja is the gift of existence. What did God tell me? He's the heart of life. Ja is the gift of existence. I am in some way eternal. I will never be duplicated. No one in this room will ever be duplicated. Infinite love and gratitude. The Singularity of every man and every woman is Jah's gift. That's what we come down here as spirits, with our own free will. We come down here to be our own expression of Jah, of God, of Abba, of the Father, of the Creator, of the Mother and the Father, infinite love and gratitude. Every man and every woman is Jah's gift. That's beautiful. What we struggle to make of it is our soul gift to Jah. Our struggles, though, that is our gift. Back to Jaw, infinite love and gratitude for the honor of being here in body, for the honor of having this experience we call life, for the honor, uh, for the honor of learning to take that 18-inch journey from the head back to the heart. Because when you were born, you started here in the heart. Infinite love and gratitude, that's what this is about, taking that journey back without fear, heart wide open, infinite love and gratitude. So it's that struggle in life that we give back to God, back to Jaw, the process of what that struggle becomes in time is truth. It is through the struggle of life that you learn truth. It is through the process, that journey, back out of the head, back out of what I like to call the junk in the trunk, infant love and gratitude, because most of what you think and believe, it ain't true. Most of your perception about yourself and the world, it ain't true. Infant love and gratitude, because we don't know what self-love is. We've been taught judgment because we haven't been listening to this book or any others. We've missed the truth in every stream. It ain't just Christianity. Everyone. We've missed the truth in everyone. Fear has been injected into every form of religion out there. There are lies told in every one. But I'm going to say this because the Father's telling me to say it, and I'm going to say it right now. The lies that have been told in Christianity have, been done, have done more damage to the soul's progression and to mankind than any other event in history, including Nazi Germany. That was channeled to me by the Father. I can tell you, I tell you this right now, Abigail would have not come up with that. Infinite love and gratitude, so I know it's the truth. Take it from here to here. Infinite love and gratitude. Reincarnation needs to be put back in that Bible and put back in now. I'm going to tell you right now, Bob Marley knew what was going on. Infinite love and gratitude. Ah, let's just see what else do we got here. Love this one. John Lennon. <laughs> John Lennon said to Muhammad Ali one time, the more real you get, okay, that means the more you live from your heart and speak your truth, the more real you get, the more unreal the world gets. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, <laughs> right? That's what we're here to do. We are here to learn how to live spirit and play earth. We are here to learn how to dance the illusion of what we believe is reality and the truth. Infinite love and gratitude. Mmm. And just, uh, just to give it out to Ali, dance like a butterfly, sting like a bee, live your life like that, okay? <laughs> Ali, if you're loving gratitude. Uh, let's see. And let's finish with some Jimi Hendrix here. Mm. If you're loving gratitude. When the power of love overcomes the, the, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. So let's say it again. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Mm. Bow, 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 <laughs> Hey, Jimi Hendrix, give it up for Hendrix. Love. <laughs> oh, yeah. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions?
any questions? <laughs> I love gratitude. Then what we're going to do, you guys, I love you. Infinite love and gratitude. Namaste to everybody in the room. Infinite love and gratitude. Really, everything. So leave with this. And we're going to turn it over to some more awesome music. And I, it could, I could not express the love I got for these guys behind me. So just throw it up there, okay? We had some pictures being taken. And there are orbs all over the room, by the way. So Zsa, Zsa is in the house. Infinite love and gratitude. <laughs> so I want to finish it with this again. There's one thing. Remember what Jay said, okay? The most important thing, if you don't remember anything else, okay? You love yourself the way God loves you without judgment. You release it today. You release it now. Don't leave this room with any of it. Release it before you leave in these next two songs. And you take everything that you hear. I don't care who wrote it. I don't care how many books they got, how many PhDs. You take it from your head to your heart. If it's not congruent, you kick it out of your head and you go with your heart every time because that's what you came here to do and that's what Jesus came here to preach. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm giving it up with total love to these guys and we're just going to take it all out. You guys stand. Stand. Okay?